Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this celebration of the third Sunday of Easter. We extend a special welcome to those who are visiting with us today, those who may be returning to the church, those who are viewing from home, and those who are seeking a new parish family. Today's readers are Fred Lampy and Patricia Simons. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Andrew, assisted by Deacon Dan. Our music ministers today are the Celebration Choir. Gift bearers will be our first communicants, Leah Friend, Rohan Ganabathi, and Elaine Stimson. During the Easter season, we hear how the disciples encounter the risen Christ at different times and in different ways, all the while trying to understand the meaning of the resurrection. We too contemplate the implications of the resurrection and consider how we see the risen Lord in our lives. It helps us to gather as a church where we can seek the presence of Christ as we worship in the assembly, in its ministers, in the Word of God, in the Holy Sacrifice, and in the Eucharist. Let us pray that we may better discern the Lord in our midst. Good morning. Good morning. Our gathering song today is found in the worship aid you received upon entering the church, Christ the Lord is risen today. Please rise. Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The, on the stage, filled with God's light and beauty, our hearts are lifted up to rejoice in the risen Lord. For as Jesus lives, so too shall we. Let us open our hearts to receive him, his body, blood, his soul, and divinity, as we come to union with Jesus, our Lord and God. Lord Jesus, Fill us this day with your power and purpose. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, nourish us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
And Lord Jesus, set our hearts the eternal banquet of life and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns here, unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated listen to God's holy and living word. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life, you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
of my name, set your seal upon my heart. You A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiatious for our sins and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. That the way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his words, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's an old legend about a king who decided to set aside a special day to honor the greatest subject. When the big day arrived, there was a large gathering in the palace courtyard. Four finalists were brought forward, and from these four, the king would select the winner. The first person presented was a wealthy philanthropist. The king was told that this man was highly deserving of the honor because of his humanitarian efforts. He had given most of his wealth to the poor. The second person was a celebrated physician. The king was told that this doctor was highly deserving of his honor because he had rendered faithful and dedicated service to the sick for many, many years. The third person was a distinguished judge. The king was told the judge 
was worthy because he was noted for his wisdom, his fairness, and his brilliant decisions. But the fourth person presented was an elderly woman. Everyone was quite surprised to see her because her manner was quite humble, as was her dress. She hardly looked the part of someone who would be honored as the greatest subject in the kingdom. What chance did she possibly have when compared to the other three who had accomplished so, so much? Even so, there was something special about her. The look of love on her face, the understanding in her eyes, her quiet confidence. The king was intrigued, to say the least, and so puzzled by her presence. He asked who she was, and the answer came, you see the philanthropist, the doctor, and the judge? Well, she was their teacher. The woman who had no wealth, no fortune, no title, but she had given herself unselfishly her whole life to produce great people. Friends, there is nothing more powerful or more Christ-like than sacrificial love. The king could not see the value of this humble lady. He missed the significance of the teacher and her lifelong labor of sacrificial love. Close to home, from heart to heart, how often do we miss the value of those around us? How often do we miss the real presence of Jesus? Just as Cleopas and his companion miss the significance of the stranger who accompanied him on this day on the road to Emmaus. It was the late afternoon and evening of the first Easter. Two followers of Jesus were walking his slow, sorrowing seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They walked a forsaken, dusty road, reminiscing and questioning. Suddenly a stranger joined him in their walk and talk. He asked him, why are you so troubled? They wanted to explain the scriptures with which they had been wrestling with so helplessly. When they arrived at their destination, the stranger acted as if he were going on farther. But when the two men invited him to stay, he quickly accepted their invitation to sit down with them. So as they sat at the table, the stranger took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. In that moment, that magic moment, their eyes were open, and they recognized him. It was the Lord. It was truly the Lord Jesus. Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures? Were not our hearts burning within us when he made himself known to us in the breaking of the bread? Can it be said of you and me that when we take and eat his body, when we take and drink his blood, that our hearts are burning within us. That yes, our souls are set on fire with this gift of divine, holy love. In addition to being the Easter season, we're celebrating First Communions. And today we have three special guests, first time to the table of the Lord. Leah Friend, Elaine Stimson, and Rowan Ganabathi. Three of 17 children that will be 17 children that will come to the altar of the Lord this holy season. As we witness their first Holy Communion, all of us who have already been here might recall our first Holy Communion. Surrounded by our family and friends and classmates, but most importantly, Jesus and each of us ourselves. Think of the joy, the happiness, the excitement of that first meeting, Jesus and us coming to union, one with each other. Just as Jesus was a companion with the two travelers on the road to Emmaus, he's still our companion. We've heard the word companion, but notice in the middle of that word there was those three letters, P-A-N, pan, which is becoming the universal word for bread, panera, bread. Our companion is Jesus. He is the one with whom we eat bread, the one with whom we share life and its joys and sorrows, its hopes and disappointments, 
It's life and death and beyond. Think back a few years ago when we were isolated at home for such a length of time. It seemed like forever. And few of us could come to receive Holy Communion. Was it another overwhelming moment when we were finally able to gather in God's house, to leave our fears outside and look to the Lord for strength and courage to go ahead? Wasn't it one of those other holy moments as we again came to a union with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist? Many of us, myself, myself wept tears of joy. Consider the joy of the newly baptized and newly professed and confirmed after this long journey and finally come to the table of the Lord. Friends, there are no words to describe such holy moments. In this year of prayer, in our worldwide family, we're leading up to next year, 2025, the Holy Year. And during this time, our church is inviting us to renew our appreciation for the Holy Eucharist, the mainstay of who we are as the body of Christ. We'll be hearing about some wonderful opportunities to come together, to pray together, to share the word together, and renew our love for him whose love cannot be forgotten. And so on this day, Holy Communion Day, for three of Jesus' friends, our friends too, let's get ready to come to union with Jesus, the bread of our journey. And as we open our hearts to him, our homes, our lives, may we love him above all things. And above all, remember that we're not alone. Jesus and us come to union with our Lord and God. Let us stand and join with uh, believing Christians here and everywhere as we profess today the Apostles' Creed, the first formula of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven to see at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, life everlasting. Amen. I invite those who are studying to become part of the church to come forward as we begin to open our hearts to God's graces and gifts this day. For the church, that we may be witnesses of the risen Christ revealing his presence in our acts of mercy and love and bringing his healing touch to those in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peoples of Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, Russia, and all regions torn by war, for those who have fled for fear of violence and have become homeless, for all who stand up with their lives to ward off evil and to protect the weak and the persecuted, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the peace given by the risen Lord to his disciples may continue to spread and flower all over the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who, will welcome, who were welcomed into the church during the Easter vigil, and for all those who will be making their first communion and confirmation during this Easter season, that they may know Christ in a special way during this time of joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Bishop Earl Boyer, in support of our Unified Diocesan Services Appeal, and for our ever, efforts to love you ever more deeply in the Holy Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are sick, that they may know Christ's comforting presence, especially in our community's care for them and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. When death brings our earthly pilgrimage to a close, Lord, show us your face, especially Bishop Thomas Gumbleton, Travis Cardo, Anthony Lejewski, 
David Lee, James May, Rick Zixi, Yvonne Weber, and for Gail Fielder and Lorraine Velthoven on her second anniversary, for whom this liturgy is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers which we hold in the silence of our hearts, joining them to those participating through our live stream. And for Elaine, Leah, and Rowan, who celebrate their first Holy Communion today, for God to bless their family, for God to bless the young church of today, here and everywhere, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Let us pray, O God, our hearts overflow with gratitude and joy for the gifts you bestow upon us, most importantly of your Son, Jesus, our companion, our bread, our life for the journey. We ask this in Jesus' name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. Dear friends, how exciting that you want to become part of God's family and grow in his love and light. So continue to grow with the Lord. Look at all this young church today here. My goodness. Congratulations and keep growing and learning about the Lord's love for you and be that light to show us the way. God be with you in our prayers. The RCA family show you God's word and his love for you. Have a great day. The Lord gives me gathered as you continue the work of Christ through his holy church.
Pray, my friends in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of the Lord. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church. And as you've given her cause for such great gladness, grant that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. This time, this time I'd like to invite Leah, Elaine, and Rowan to come and stand around the altar on this special day that Jesus has made. Come on up, dear friends. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, O Lord. But this time, above all, to allow you more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forevermore. Therefore, overcome a paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly chorus with angelic hosts sing together him your praise as we sing. to us and to all, for this we thank you. We thank you above all for your Son, Jesus Christ. You sent him into this world because people had turned away from you no longer loved each other. He opened our eyes and hearts to understand that we are sisters and brothers, and you are Father for us all. He brought us the good news of life to be lived with you forever in heaven. He showed us the way of, to that life, the way of love. He himself has gone that way before us. He now brings us together to one table and asks us to do what he did. Father, we ask you to bless these gifts of bread and wine and make them holy. Change them for us to the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, our eternal Lord. On the night before he died for us, he had supper for the last time with his disciples. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. In the same way, he took a cup of wine. He gave you thanks and handed the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal coming poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Then he said to them, Do this in memory of me. Yes, Jesus, we remember, we love you. Thank you. God, our Father, remember you all that Jesus did to save us. And his holy sacrifice that you gave us a gift to his church. Remember his death and resurrection. Father in heaven, accept us together with your beloved Son. He willingly died for us, but he raised us to life again. With grateful hearts, we thank you and sing. <laughs> But he 
is also here on earth among us. One day he will come in glory and his kingdom no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness. Father in heaven, you have called us to receive the body and blood of Christ at this table and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. This sacred meal give us strength to please you more and more. Lord our God, remember Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, and all who serve you. Help all who follow Jesus to work for peace, to bring happiness to others. Fill all Christians with the gladness of Easter. Help us bring this joy to all who are sorrowful. Remember Gail Fielder, Lorraine Veldhoven on her second anniversary, my father Peter Tchaikovsky, and all the departed who seek the light of your presence. Bring us all at last to go with Mary, the mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with St. John, and all the saints, to live with you and to be one with Christ Jesus in heaven. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. by the Holy Spirit, taught by divine Savior, let us now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Gracious, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace to you and accord your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen.
Leah Susan Friend.
last 50 days so let's come back again and again to celebrate the good news that as Jesus lives so too shall we and this is the day the Lord has made us congratulate Leah, Elaine and Rowan for celebrating their first Holy Communion <laughs> oh what a happy day thank you Jesus thank you this day what a beautiful day to enjoy the campus the flowering trees and the smell of spring thanks be to God we've waited a long time let it renew us Remind us of God's love that eternally watches over us every nanosecond of our life. So let's stand for our prayer and blessing. <coughs> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries maintain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.